eight or nine different cases that may come up to the court, cases in controversy. And one of the reasons you can't tell us how you would rule is because there's active litigation coming to the court. Is that correct? That is correct. And one of the reasons you can say with confidence that you think Brown versus Board of Education is super precedent is that you're not aware of any effort to go back to the good old days of segregation by a legislative body. Is that correct? That is correct. I've also said that in lectures that Brown was correct as an original matter. So that is the kind of thing, since I've said it in writing, I felt like I could express before the committee. It is striking that as we sit here right now in this committee room, there are only two Democratic senators in the room. If you look at the dais, there's chair after chair after chair that is empty. The Democratic senators are no longer even attending. I assume they'll show up for their time. But it is indicative of what they're tacitly admitting, which is that they don't have substantive criticism. Mr. Chairman, may I make a point of personal privilege? Of course. Of course in the midst may. of a COVID-19 crisis, a pandemic, and some members are in their offices following this on television, and to suggest their absence here means they're not following or participating is incorrect. I would note the senator from Illinois and his personal privilege somehow omitted the fact that that all but two of the Democrats were physically here yesterday, and after the questioning, they made the decision not to be here. That's fine. That, you're, you're welcome to make that decision. Did you have, then, a general understanding that one of the president's campaign promises was to repeal the Affordable Care Act when you were nominated? Um, I, as I said before, I'm aware that the president opposes the Affordable Care Act. Well, I know you're aware now, but were you aware back then? Well, seems When you were nominated. Well, Senator Klobuchar, I think that the Republicans have kind of made that clear. It's just been part of the public discourse. Okay, but it just it's the, is the answer yes, then, that you well, were Well, Senator aware of Klobuchar, it? all these questions, you're, you're suggesting that I have animus or that I cut a deal with the president, and I was very clear yesterday that that isn't what happened. And Judge, what I want to explore with you in the time I have remaining is exactly how those shifts in methodology, in approach, um, may well have a dramatic impact on the policy outcomes, on what is and isn't um, upheld as law going forward. Uh, on the board behind me, um, I, I've asked my team if we would just go back and look at cases. Um, all of these cases listed, it's roughly 120, have something in common. Justice Ginsburg was in the majority. Justice Scalia was in the minority dissenting. And these are cases that touch on nearly every aspect of modern American life. I've talked a lot yesterday about health care and the Affordable Care Act. Yes, that's on there. Um, a number of my colleagues have talked about some other areas. But what's striking is if you, if you just look at what a 5-4 balance towards this methodology means if changed towards a 5-4 balance to this methodology, it has huge consequences for education, for consumer rights, for access to the courts, for civil rights, for immigration, for environmental protection for Native American rights, for workers' rights, for elections, for executive power, for reproductive rights, for free speech, civil justice, economic development, privacy, government misconduct, prisoner rights, capital punishment, gun safety, and criminal justice. I think all baseball fans know that the Houston Astros cheat. Um, they, they steal signs, uh, they bang on cans. Um, They've done a whole bunch of miserable things historically, and they, they deserve to be punished probably more than they have been. Um, but tonight is game four. Thank yeah. goodness the First Amendment protects that right for him to express <laughs> that erroneous opinion. If, if, if you want to defend cheating, that is certainly the prerogative of the senior senator. And the junior senator from Texas now rushes into the room to do some homerism. The scurrilous lies about the Astros, I think, should be stricken from the record and, and forgotten by all. Joining me now, NBC News Capitol Hill correspondent Leanne Caldwell and NBC News correspondent Heidi Prisbola. Leanne, another long day of questioning, shorter than yesterday, but still a pretty long day of questioning for Judge Barrett. Many of those questions on the Affordable Care Act once again. Here's Senator Amy Klobuchar. Yesterday, you were asked by Senator Harris, prior to your nomination, were you aware of President Trump's statements committing to nominate judges who will strike down the Affordable Care Act? You said, I can't really definitively give you a yes or no answer. What I would like to say is I don't recall hearing about or seeing such statements. 
And I just find it hard to understand that you were not aware of the president's statements. Um, I am aware that the president opposes the Affordable Care Act. I'm aware that he has criticized the Affordable Care Act. I took Senator Harris's question yesterday to be referring to the specific tweet, maybe the one that you have behind you, about how he wanted to put a justice on the court to replace Obamacare. Mm -hmm. And I'm definitely aware of that tweet now. Um, and as I said to Senator Harris yesterday, it came up in some of my calls with Democratic senators, um, brought it up. But I honestly can't remember whether I knew about it before I was nominated or not. I Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.